Hi, I'm Emily Gong, and welcome to Art Focus Spoken. Our mission is to feature the voices of artists and unite creative communities across the globe. We aim to do this amid COVID-19 in our ongoing series called Creating Through Crisis. On today's episode, we are excited to speak with Oliver Pock, artist, founder, and co-director of Akin in Toronto. Oliver's work centers around the photographic, sculptural, and video-based elements straddling the boundary between physical and digital art. His specific interest lies in exploring the ways in which digitally captured objects can translate back into the physical realm. Oliver holds an honors BA in economics from the University of Toronto. Recent exhibitions include Vaulted 12 Basel, Mercer Union, Art Gallery of Ontario, Angel Gallery, Toronto International Film Festival, and the Art Gardner Museum, among many others. Today, Oliver is speaking with us from the safety of his home in Toronto, Canada. Oliver, thanks so much for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Thanks for asking, Emily, and, and thanks for, for having me. I'm excited to be, be here today. Really excited to be talking with you today as well. And so for listeners who may not know you yet, could you tell us a bit about yourself and your artistic practice as well as work at it, Ken, please? Yeah, of course. Um, so I, I sort of split my, my life, uh, my work life in, in, in two areas, as, as you have mentioned, Emily. And uh, so first and foremost, I'm a, a visual artist and, and have been for, uh, I would say, clo- close to 15 years or so. And um, typically my in the past my work was was uh was purely photographic and and uh, as you mentioned it's it's evolved um over time and now includes various other forms including video and and sculpture uh and um and so the my art practice has has been sort of at the core of of what i'm what i'm doing with with much of my time for for uh quite quite a long while now and so about uh it's coming up to 12 years ago uh i i was involved in in starting akin uh out of personal need myself and a few friends were you know working from our kitchen tables and that sort of thing not exactly you know the most conducive spaces in in um in many contexts for our artistic practice and and so we wanted to have a space where we could work together and uh and so we we started with a very small 500 square foot space uh that um that was shared by about 10 or 12 of us and um and so that that has uh that was really what the intention was and and very quickly we we realized that there were many other people who were sort of in the same situation needing space to work from and and wanting to be part of a, a community of, of um, visual artists, but also designers and and uh, and creatives, broadly speaking, and and so um, Akin has now evolved and, and grown over over this the past sort of decade plus, uh, and and um, and now has uh, nine locations across Toronto, from from east uh, in Scarborough area to uh, nearly in Scarborough to uh, the on the west uh, in Etobicoke. So, um, and and there are now. I mean, our numbers have dropped unfortunately due to, to COVID. But uh, pre COVID, I think we had about um, uh, three hundred plus artists who are working in our in our spaces, and um, and then we, we we host about fifty or sixty uh, arts events per per year as well, which which range from. Uh, professional development uh, programming uh, so you know how to do your taxes uh, how to apply for a grant uh, some of these very essential um, things that that uh, creatives w- want to learn um, as well as sort of technical um, uh, workshops on, on specific uh, elements of, of our practices uh, and then we we also host a a lot of um, sort of pure creative workshops um, and family oriented workshops as well and then uh, sort of the third stream of our programming is is centered around uh, 
partnering with other community organizations, uh, maybe who don't typically work with artists, but would like to involve the arts in, in, in what they do. And, and so that has included uh, the Center for Addiction and Mental Health. Uh, there are a, a few different uh, newcomer organizations who we've partnered with and, uh, and yeah, it's a partnership uh, based kind of approach. And um, so those, those three streams of programming act to kind of be the, the gel between Akin's studio members, but also the, uh, the, the broader public uh, who are like all of our programming is, is, is widely open to, uh, to the public. So a nice way for us to engage with people around us in, in communities. Um, so do, uh, does that sort of answer, answer your question? Is that yes, that's amazing to hear. And the like realm of different programs, projects, studio initiatives and opportunities there are in, um, offered to artists in Toronto because of the existence of Aken and the community that Aken has created in the cultural and creative space. Because um, in Toronto, like that's... It's, it's so important, but it's like not really there. And there's definitely like limitations on creative space in Toronto. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. so I'm curious too, in the present situation, like how has your routine changed? And like, how have you adapted to things? And what about like some transitions at Akin? Yeah, um, so, definitely there there are some some changes day to day and and um and as far as work working sort of context definitely very different than uh than it has been in the past uh typically myself and and michael vickers my my co-director and then michael delios the the chair of uh of the the board of akin projects which is is one of the two halves of, of akin uh we share a studio space together uh, in in Bloordale where we all work and um, so sadly we're not able to, to do that um, though we have sort of alternated and had sort of shifts when one of us can go into the space and do some work there um, but for the most part I've been working just from home and um, I, I live with my wife Sally and my two-year-old son Simon he had his birthday on Monday um, and so it's a, a very different um, existence. I mean, he had he had been in in daycare and and uh, now obviously is is not. And um, so uh, my partner and I are are you know managing how how that how that looks. And and um, I think we've got a a, a decent um, sort of process, I suppose, as far as um, as far as what our days look like. Um, but yeah, certainly very, very different and, and it's, it's much more challenging for me to try to put in, you know, an eight hour day that just isn't really possible, uh, amongst, amongst everything and, and, um, managing what's going on. And it's challenging because now given all the situations that are, that are occurring really like it akin specifically does require a more than even you know the, the the amount of time that I would typically uh, spend on that work um, and truthfully uh, oh since since COVID began it has been very difficult for me to, to put in the amount of time that I would like to into my art art practice um, and I mean that's starting to pick up a little bit more now just because I, I think I'm I'm being more strict with myself and and uh, ensuring that I that I do put in that time, um, but yeah, it's 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 certainly been a, a transition, and um, <clears throat> and yeah, I, I I'm I'm trying to see the the positive elements of it and and the um, the things that are that can be learned from this process. Um, I think so much. Uh, it's a process of listening and, and learning in order to improve, and and um, and I think that relates to to uh, what's going on with with um, COVID um, as well as as Black Lives Matter uh, movement, which is which is happening, um, and being yeah being open ears and and willing to to 
adapt and, and learn and, and continue to, to grow. Um, sort of spe- a, a major part of, of my work with the kin has been focused around navigating things with our with our landlords um, as you can imagine they're they're they, they range as far as how understanding and, and supportive they are some are much more uh, accommodating than than others so that's been a, a major time-consuming thing that um, typically isn't um, isn't that way in our, in our um, in, in the regular regular times um, so that's been a, a major adjustment for sure yeah and I saw that Akin has a relief fund so to help artists assist with their studio rent um, what do you think is some of the biggest challenges facing artists in these times mm-hmm <clears throat> Well, financial challenges are, are certainly uh, a major one. Um, I mean, many of the Kins artists are in a vulnerable financial position at the best of times, and um, having having everything uh, sort of transpire the way it it is with COVID, people's in- incomes are are being impacted. And yes, there's the CERB uh, program here that uh, that does support but uh, for, with government funding but um, yeah still people are being heavily impacted as far as their financial position um, these are obviously not unrelated things but mental health is a is a major challenge it's um, we I think I think most people just are, are experiencing a, a base level of anxiety due to what's happening and and um, and I think the uh, un the unknown sort of entering this this unknown new uh, existence that we're all that we're all facing and and I think um, this has been mentioned in in uh, at least one article that I've read but uh, there one feeling that that many people are having is actually grief over the things that we will lose but we're not even sure what they are yet at this point. Um, and I thought that was a, a, a very like wise uh, understanding that that uh, the writer of that article had, and I'm sorry I can't uh, I can't remember the the uh, the name of the article or the or the writer, but um, yeah, an interesting sort of concept to work through. So I th- I think that's something that's that's certainly at the in in people's minds as well, um, and uh, you know. Further challenges are are um, exist very acutely for uh, for Black Indigenous people of color, uh, their communities. Uh, you know, from underrepresentation to flat out racism. Um, these things are obviously at the f- more at the forefront of many people's minds, thankfully. But um, those are those are challenges that. Uh, that many people wrestle with every day, um, and and so I think those those things are all related. Um, but uh, yeah, some some very heavy heavy challenges for sure that are being uh, exacerbated by what's happening with with COVID nineteen. Yes, and I think all the different things happening to it adds to the uncertainty of yeah. the situation. And I mean, for a lot of artists, it's a matter of making a makeshift workspace, perhaps. Um, But not everyone has the luxury to. And so um, I know you mentioned that you've been able to make a makeshift workspace at home. Um, Do you mind sharing with us, like just showing us? No, not not at all. For those who are tuned in via audio format, could you just give a simple visual description as you just kind of walk through and show us? Yeah, for sure. So, um, I, I've been a little bit, uh, sort of nomadic in, in our home, uh, in our apartment and, and, um, and thankfully we have a little bit of outdoor space, which I I won't go out there because I think the, it's quite windy now and it'll probably impact the audio quality, but, um, we have a little like balcony. So, so it's been nice to be able to work out there on, on, uh, warmer days, which we're having lots of recently. Um, and then off of our kitchen, 
Uh, we have, it's probably about seven by seven feet, uh, a little sort of sunroom, which is where I am now. Um, you'll see my cat sleeping there, one of, one of two cats. Um, and then uh, there's my kitchen behind me. Uh, and then basically it's, it's nice and bright, which is a, a major reason for, for wanting to spend time here. Um, and then I've got some of my like equipment and, and tools and stuff in, uh, in the, the crate there. But, um, yeah, I really just wanted to have like a, a nice bright space, uh, where, where I could have things, have things set up. And, and I mean, I've had to set it up in a way that, uh, I can very quickly and easily kind of stow everything away, uh, for when Simon, our two year old comes running in and I don't want him. I, I've been working with some like woodworking tools recently. So, uh, those are, those are not the, the tools for two year olds. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is this is sort of one of one of a couple of, of spaces at home that is that is like somewhat conducive to to work in. Um, so yeah, it's it's certainly uh, I'm I'm certainly missing the studio that I mentioned before where where I work with with my colleagues. But uh, but nice to have some dedicated space at home that that uh, that I can be working whether it's on a kin things or on on. Uh, my artwork so yeah thanks for showing us and do you find that in this makeshift space there's particular things you can do to help cultivate a positive work environment or workflow yeah i think so um like my 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 natural sort of tendency or inclination if i'm sort of left to my own devices is is really to go into like uh, and this specifically, uh, uh, or especially applies to my art practice, but, um, go into sort of a zone where I'm, I'm able to sort of block out everything else. And I can, I, I sometimes like will not notice until after the fact, but I've sort of missed lunch or, you know, I've not taken any breaks and, and, um, so I'm, I'm really trying to be more, uh, like I like the fact that I do go into that like I do get really in, in the zone um, but it's also not it's not entirely healthy and I, I want to make sure that I'm I'm eating and and taking proper breaks and that sort of <laughs> that sort of thing for obvious reasons uh, so trying to be a bit more regimented with that is um, is is valuable I've found that especially and um, and I've I've been able to attend a number of um, sort of like mental health slash wellness um, uh, events that that Akin has hosted just just digitally or virtually, and um, so it's been it's been great to uh, to sort of learn from from those uh, those sessions just to, as far as as far as taking proper proper care uh, when we're working. I think I think as far as like taking breaks it also helps that that uh we have a dog named penny and and so uh you know she obviously needs to go out on a regular basis and and so that's a nice um that's kind of a nice thing to to to, to have to sort of incorporate into my day um taking a taking a breather and going for a walk so i can sort of decompress or or process uh whatever it is i've been i've been working on yeah thanks for sharing so i know a lot of your works um explore the boundary between sculptural as well as visual uh, digital like video based works and so yeah. and a lot at the audience what we see is the end work what's a big part of your process um that is not really evident in your end work um i think the i think probably the best example uh would be um the photographic element of my work and I mentioned before that uh, my my practice began at, with just more more pure photography digital and analog and, and some medium format analog um, and and so that's like I, I that's still very dear to me and the, the, there's a, that's that's probably why it's still a, a major component in the digital work that, that I do, um, because it came from that place. Um, 
And uh, to explain a bit further, uh, almost all of my work begins actually with a uh, with with uh, photography, where I'm uh, either photographing sort of assemblages of of uh, materials or or objects that I've found or made, um, and uh, that and, and I mean that also that also has included scanning like 2d as well as 3d scanning as well but to stick with photography for a moment which is the most common um sort of tool i'm using in the early stages of the work uh though those photos that are taken as part of that initial stage are then what is actually processed digitally and 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 sort of pulled between uh these these different states and um in the final outcome of the work, whether it's video or or a, a two dimensional print or or sculptural, um, it's it's not. I don't I don't think it's evident that it that it comes from photography, and um, I I don't have like a firm opinion on how I feel about that yet. And it's like I often have conversations with with people who are interested in the process and I and I explain to the, that to them and and they in most cases like that wasn't apparent to them. Um and I think that uh I think that some people have been interested in in uh knowing a bit more of of how that factors in and and um and I also feel some interest there, so I, I I wouldn't be surprised if that component of of my process was forefronted a little bit more in the future, maybe. Um, but it's probably too early to say right now. Um, so yeah, it's also a good time now just to kind of reflect, I guess, on people's individual practices if there's the time and space to do so, and also a nice way to get our mind off of things and because it is like a pretty important time and space that we have right now that we don't really have when things are normal quote unquote um so if that's like looking at the positive side of things um i agree and i think that's i think that's so important um and is something that you know artists don't necessarily need all of their tools or materials or their regular sort of setup in order to do that and and sort of take some time to just sort of observe what they what they've done or their process and and just sort of analyze and reflect on it i think that you're right that's that this is that's something that really like can be engaged with right now and so um i know that you did um you studied economics at um u of t and um could you share us a, with us a bit more about kind of this combination of your economics background with art and your journey on how you founded Aken and made a sustainable career from pursuing your passion and created a community for over 300 artists along the way? Yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's not, uh, I guess, in, intuitive, uh, sort of the, the, the connection between economics and, and, um, and what I do now, but uh, I think it has certainly been very, uh, beneficial and and more so I think kind of integral in in what path my my life has taken uh, at, towards the end of university and coming out of out of university I was I was actually much uh, like greatly focused on my um, on playing music uh, I played played the uh, alto sax and and a couple other instruments from childhood and and um, and I was, that was really where my focus was and playing in a, a couple of, um, I guess like indie rock bands and, uh, doing some touring and, and that sort of thing. And, and, um, I, when, when Akin, when Akin was started and when I was kind of beginning to build a bit more momentum with my art practice, uh, they were sort of in the, they were sort of second, uh, second and third in line to to pursuing music, but um, gradually over, over over several years, it 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 worked in in a way that like it made much more sense um, for me to 
pursue my my art and and akin um and those those really were where my my passion was was lying um and it also helps that they they reinforce and help build one another in a, in a sense too obviously because they're they're in the same industry um to, like immediately and um so i think that ha having an economics degree um i think on the art my own art practice side of things i i i am someone who is interested in like I guess analytical processes and and in um, yeah sort of exploring um, this doesn't exactly relate to to economics but the the tech the technology side of, of the work that I do I think that I guess sort of having a having a, a, a technical interest um, is is maybe common between economics and and the artwork that I make now um, and and with with Akin, I think having um, having the sort of business background uh, from that undergrad degree has has been um, definitely very important because it's it's allowed me to uh, at least have some base understanding of, of business practices and and um, how to how to sort of navigate that that sort of that sort of world um and you know sadly uh in in most uh fine art uh university or college programs much of the the sort of business side of of things is really not focused on um uh, and and so i i i i think that having my my academic background allows me to maybe approach things a little bit differently than than what um, many artists with with a formal uh, fine art uh, training would would uh, how they would approach it. So I think that there's value there, and and um, I've certainly appreciated uh, my that that having that economics degree in my back pocket many times, um, and has has helped a lot over the over the years. And so, um, like with when you were starting a Ken and you were um, so it started out as a studio space for you and a few friends and yeah. then it grew from there when you identified the need for studio space for artists in Toronto and was that hard to balance so when you were making art as well as you were kind of this was being born akin was being born and taking off from the ground yeah um yeah, and I think even more so because at the at that time when Akin was starting, I, I I was working on on music as well. So there were sort of the three things like battling in my in my brain and like in my in my sort of schedule, if you will, like all the time. Um, it's it became more manageable just to to have to to not have music in in the equation. Sadly. Um, but sort of was the only way to like move forward at that time um but yeah i mean it's uh i i feel very pulled in in uh in different directions on a daily basis and and um i think it's i mean that's something that i've learned to live with i don't necessarily think it's like healthy ultimately um and there are definitely days when I wish that I was just doing one of the two things that I'm doing between art and, and akin. Um, so yeah, it, it, it is, it is challenging, but I love both of them. And, um, yeah, I, 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 so I will continue to, to, uh, to rise to the occasion and, and try to, um, try to do the best I can with, with both, I guess, is the ultimate, um, the ultimate, uh, kind of the end game or this, the, the, the sort of intention. Thank you. It's really beneficial to the community and it looks like you have a really good team at Akin too for like Akin Collective and Akin Projects. How many, yeah. how many people are on the team? 
Um, so all together between the, the two sister organizations, there are 11 of us. And then um, Akin Projects, being a nonprofit, also has its board of directors. Uh, um, and and so, um, yeah, we're we're a, a good a good team for sure. And um, some of our some of our team have been with us f uh, as as members initially, and and as staff for you know five, six, seven years. Um, Michael, my co-director, has been involved with Akin for. Uh, I think about 10 years and um, so we we're a close team and and even though we work remotely normal like in normal times uh, again air quotes normal times um, we uh, we are close and and I think we've I think and this can improve and and hopefully we'll continue to improve but I think we've we've done a pretty good job of of um, I guess for, for all of us to feel comfortable working um, together while also like being our true selves um, and not feeling like we have to uh, drastically alter who we are when we're with our, our colleagues. Um, and I think that has allowed us to, to have like genuine friendships amongst, um, amongst our group and work with the many challenges that we, that we, uh, face in in a way that's um can be like i guess smoother um uh, because those relationships exist that's great and it's reflected in the environment that's created for artists who are at akin and have studio spaces there it's just the support network and um i guess responsiveness is really great when you have such a good team um that's good to hear i mean i i mean i think still like you know we are like sort of obsessed with 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 growing and learning and and improving and um so you know it, it, i'm i i feel happy and and proud but also um want to do better um to to make sure that everyone has as good of an experience as, as they can so that really they can they can be focused on their their artwork and and do the best work that they can and I'm sure that in the past 12 years, there's been challenges faced um, at Akin too. And I'm curious, personally, are there any um, tough periods besides the present situation that held you back from creating? Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I mean, like, early... Uh, I mean, I, I can a, try to answer sort of on the akin side and on our, our, my artwork side. Um, with akin, I mean, there there was there was definitely a, a period, you know, in its earlier like few years where uh, when we we just had one location, there were about twenty five or thirty people working there. But um, it was it was uh, I was faced with sort of the the decision like do we uh do we try to do we close this down basically and and let it end or uh turn it into something that is a sustainable organization that can continue uh you know in the long term and um i i mean we've come a long way but but it, it is still uh Akin is a vulnerable organization, and and um, even though it it may appear large in in terms of like locations or square footage or number of people, it's um, it's 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 often touch touch and go, um, and uh, so the 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 challenge the broad challenge of of Akin being sustainable and being um, a place to work that does not um, that that does not sort of uh, detract from from people's sort of happiness um, and like put undue stress on them like that's that's still an ongoing an ongoing challenge for sure and um, and I think that as we kind of come out of this this period and, and into sort of whatever new existence uh, we move into there will be some some developments just as, as far as, as far as like the improving the overall sustainability of, of a kin. Um, I think for, for my artwork, the past 
two years have, have been, um, probably the most, uh, challenging and it's largely been because, uh, like it, it's timed with when, when, uh, our son was born and, and, um, you know, it's, it sort of goes without saying that, that perspectives change, priorities change, and every, everything you thought you knew is, is completely different. And your, uh, you, your time is used in very different ways. And, and, um, so, you know, it's been a, I've, I've, uh, willingly made, um, sacrifices mostly on the on the art side of things um and i'm totally happy to have made those those sacrifices but it's still um it's still challenging because uh i certainly had much more momentum with with my art practice prior to to having a child and i think that's probably just realistic for for most parents um or for many many parents um and so I'm happy now to, to be able to um, focus a little bit more on it and, and gradually uh, sort of rebuild. And, and I'm, I'm happy because there, there are a number of sort of new directions and new ideas that I'm, I'm pursuing. And, and so it's, it's kind of allowed that breathing space and like what we were talking about before, the sort of analyzing and, and um, thinking, thinking, it, uh, through sort of processes and, and like what, what I'm trying to do with my work. And, um, yeah, I do think that, uh, given everything that's going on in the world, it, it there's sort of a, a psychological, um, kind of reevaluation and like, what is, what is the, there are big questions. What is the purpose of art, you know, and how, what does art do now? What can art do now? And, um, and I mean, as I think many would agree, art has uh, art is an incredibly powerful tool and and has been and especially through times of, of crisis and um, and so part of part of what I'm going through in my mind is is what does what does my art do that that is like relevant and and is is not just an, a pretty thing to look at um, so that's that's sort of where I'm at. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm yeah. also curious to see like all the different things created during these times, um, regardless of what medium and what form. Yeah. And yeah, just like communicating the different voices, a lot of the voices that are unheard usually. And yeah. like through your experiences, what's like one piece of advice that you would give to your younger self? Huh. Um, well, I guess without without opening up more than than people like would really want to um, want me to, uh, I I think that um, I've I've been able to kind of incorporate an understanding in my life that uh, mistakes are you know a, 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 an important way to improve, um, and as a result of that, I've. I've rarely had regrets and instead of have, have spent a lot of time being reflective and, and trying to, um, just improve, I suppose. Um, even though that's a, you know, can be a very slow process. Um, having said that, I, I do wish, um, I do wish that I had started my, my journey with, um, environmental and and social justice uh learnings much earlier in my life um i think that would have improved the work that i've i've done um on both sides of my sort of existence um would have improved access to to people um this is more so on the on the akin side but uh improve access and, and bettering people's experiences with, um, with the, 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 uh, the organization and, and, um, and yeah, might've had more of an impact on, on my past artwork as well. Um, 
so that's that's something that I I wish uh, had been a little bit different, um, and certainly not that I was um, you know not not interested in those things and not not um, not eager, but uh, but certainly didn't take this didn't take steps to like deeply incorporated into my like thinking um, and actions earlier. So um, that's, that's something that, you know, I, I feel fortunate to be um, more engaged with now and, uh, and will continue to be. Thanks for sharing. And it's yeah. quite clear, like through your artistic practice and your work, the point of access and that as a link for the work that you do and also that's kind of reflected in a Kim projects as well and so um how what's like the state of initiatives for Kim projects have they been mostly paused or are there things that maybe the audience should know about um um so a Kim projects uh, are are um are manager of um of programming uh janet hinkle she's she was amazing at um or has been amazing at converting our uh our in-person programming into a, a, a virtual format and um obviously there are there are limitations but she's been very creative in in sort of devising ways of of uh engaging with people um in similar ways, even though they can't be in the same room together, um, and I mean, it's been great to see how how um, innovative and and just creative many arts organizations have been in in um, in doing that type of work and really like flipping the way that they they typically operate. Um, so it's been it's I, I've been happy to see how how we've how we've adapted um, and. I think that will the the learnings that we'll have as a result of that will now just be incorporated into the future too, and and we'll we'll just continue doing a lot of that that digital programming um, because for many people it is more accessible than than having to like you know travel and go to a place um, you know we'll still we'll once we can we'll return to doing a lot of in-person things and art exhibitions and we have all sorts of things sort of in the in the planning pro in the planning stage but um, yeah it, it will be great because there'll be sort of this new element that we didn't really do in the past that uh, that we've had to learn how to do quickly and and um, and can now continue uh, continue with that into into the future so, um, yeah, does that answer your question? Yes, for sure. And yeah, really excited sure. for when the programming starts up again and can go into the gallery space, like remote gallery, to check out the new yeah. works. But also, probably the future direction is having more online workshops um, for artists because of travel and various yeah. reasons. It makes access, so it decreases the threshold of access. Um, so, um, Absolutely. Yeah, though it's hard to like network, I guess, for um, online things like that. Yeah, that I think that's that's um, sort of the a, a main thing that that does get lost. You 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 don't have that. Um, well, you can't read body language, and I I think that humans like that's such an important part of our communication. And you know, you can you can get the gist from from seeing someone on video, but. Uh, it's not the same as as being in person with someone, um, and so I I think you're right. That does impact sort of uh, relationship building between between people. Um, so yeah. I think that's where our our in person events will will play an important role. Mm -hmm. Look forward to those. And it's interesting the concept that you mentioned too of like in person human interaction. And so kind of questioning the importance of that. And that's kind of, I think, an ongoing theme um, that's yeah. mentioned when I'm having conversations with people. Yeah, that makes sense. And so um, in the wider community, what's a cool project that you've seen lately? Um, I, think, I think the best is is Black Lives Matter Plaza, the street mural in, in Washington, D.C. 
I think that's I think that's um, the best uh, art response to a global situation that that uh, that I can think of um, and was like so so quickly done and so effectively done and and um, yeah it's just a, a it's like an amazing and inspiring thing to see um, so I'm yeah I'm, I would say that so impactful definitely thanks so much for joining us today and to end on a positive note um, there's been a lot of pockets of positivity but what's something that you're grateful for today Um, I think this, this touches on what, on something that, that's been part of our conversation, but, um, that, uh, that time for introspection and, and sort of self, um, self analysis, um, I think that that's one of the most important things that, that is being forced upon people right now um, and people really are having to take a long hard look at themselves and and um, and understand understand themselves a little bit better and understand the context in which they live a little bit better um, and maybe understand how they can live their lives dif more different uh, how they can live their lives differently and, and in, in ways that make them happier, but also, um, improve the lives of, of people around them too. Um, and I'm hopeful that as a society, we will use this as an opportunity for change and, and vast improvement. Yeah. Thanks so much. That's so well said. And thanks again for joining us today and trying to unpack some of these deeper topics that's happening in the now as we're trying to process them, as we're confronted with it, because it is um, a period of uncertainty. And I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Kohei. Um, without him, this would not have been possible. So thank you both very much. Thank you both very much, Kohei and, and Emily. It's it's a pleasure to, to meet you, though, virtually. and. Uh, and um, yeah, thank you for inviting me to, to join uh, today. And yeah, I look forward to, to um, hearing or watching some of the, the other interviews that, uh, that you're doing as part of this project. And best of luck with it. Thank you, thank you. And looking forward to visiting um, again after all of this. <laughs> yeah, I, I look forward to that as well. Well, th thank you. Thanks so much for tuning in. We would love to hear your thoughts or questions. Please let us know in the comments and review section, and we'll try to cover it in the next sessions. If you enjoy this content, please share and subscribe for more episodes. For latest updates, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Art Focus Exchanges.